Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 25th of February. India-US signed three packs, finalized defense deal worth $3 billion. Protest held outside UN office in London to seek justice for minor Hindu girl in Pakistan. And Afghanistan confirms the first coronavirus case in province bordering Iran. And now for all the details, U.S. President Donald Trump on the second day of his maiden two-day India visit was accorded a ceremonial welcome at the Presidential Palace in capital New Delhi on Tuesday. India and the U.S. inked two MOUs and the letter of cooperation and finalized a defense deal worth $3 billion U.S. billion in a meeting between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and U.S. President Trump. U.S. President Donald Trump was accorded a ceremonial welcome at India's presidential palace in capital New Delhi on Tuesday. Trump, accompanied by First Lady Melania, was greeted by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Indian President Ramnath Kovind. The U.S. President was then given the traditional tri-service guard of honor at the forecourt of the President House. President Trump and Melania later paid tributes at Rajkhat the memorial dedicated to India's founding father, Mahatma Gandhi. They later read at the memorial and also observed one minute of silence. Later, Prime Minister Modi and President Trump held wide-ranging discussions on all aspects of India-U.S. global strategic partnership at Hyderabad House. India and the U.S. finalized defense deals worth 3 billion U.S. dollars and signed three international documents including two MOUs and one letter of cooperation. Both leaders later addressed a joint conference following delegation level talks. Aaj hamari charcha mein humne is partnership ke har ahem pehlu par sakaratmak vichar kiya. Chahe wo defense and security ho, energy strategic partnership ho, technology cooperation ho, global connectivity ho, trade relations ho, ya phir people to people ties. Trump, who lauded 5G defense and trade deals with Modi said that the United States was working productively with Pakistan to counter terrorism on its soil. Earlier, US First Lady Melania Trump visited a government school in New Delhi that teaches a special happiness curriculum rooted in mindfulness practices. Trump, who arrived in Western Ahmedabad city on Monday for his Made in India visit, will depart for the U.S. by his special flight on Tuesday night. Death toll jumped to at least nine on Tuesday in clashes in the Indian capital New Delhi over the Citizenship Amendment Act. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah reviewed the situation in a meeting with top officials and assured efforts to restore normalcy at the earliest. At least nine people, including one policeman, were killed and around 150 were injured in clashes between opposing groups in the Indian capital, New Delhi, over the Citizenship Amendment Act. The clashes erupted on Monday in northeastern part of the city, between thousands of people demonstrating for and against the new citizenship law, which eases path of non-Muslims from three neighboring countries to gain Indian citizenship. There were also reports of fresh clashes as tensions in parts of the city remained high on Tuesday, with schools and metro stations remaining shut in some areas. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah held a meeting with Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and top police officials on Tuesday afternoon to discuss the situation and directed officials to restore normalcy at the earliest. 
बहुत सकारात्मक मीटिंग रही जिसमें पार्टी पॉलिटिक्स से ऊपर उठ के सब ने ये तय किया कि ये हमारी अपनी सबकी दिल्ली का मामला है और सभी पार्टियां मिलके और सभी पॉलिटिकल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स मिलके दिल्ली में वापस शांति बहाल करने के लिए जो भी संभव प्रयास है हम सब संभव प्रयास करेंगे इंडिया कैपिटल हैज बीन हॉट बेड ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट दी न्यू सिटीजनशिप अमेंडमेंट एक्ट क्रिटिक्स ब्लेम दी लॉ अंडर माइंड इंडिया सेक्युलर ट्रेडिशन फॉर एक्सक्लूडिंग मुस्लिम but the government has denied any bias moving on members of the indian diaspora staged a demonstration on monday outside the un office in london demanding justice for a minor hindu girl who was forcibly converted and married to a middle aged muslim man in pakistan members of the indian diaspora in united kingdom on monday staged a demonstration outside the un office in london demanding justice for minor hindu girl mahak kumari who was allegedly abducted forcibly converted to islam and married to a middle aged muslim man in pakistan sindh there was a widespread furor among some pakistani clerics and demanded death punishment for mahak kumari after she retracted from her statement that she accepted islam of her own free will in a court hearing this month The protesters in London called Pakistan an abuser of human rights and demanded justice for Mehak who was sent to a protection home by a Pakistani court last week instead of being handed back to her parents. They are kidnapped by mullahs, they are converted forcibly to Islam, they are married off to men who are 4 5 times their age. 14 year old girl is married to a 70 year old man. And then when she wants to go back to her family, they impose blasphemy law on her and they say that we will kill you. The world has to stop this. In 1947, minorities comprised 23% of Pakistan's population. However, the numbers have come down to nearly 3%. Activists have long raised concerns over the plight of minorities in Pakistan, where they have been subjected to draconian blasphemy laws, blatant abuse, and forced conversions over the years. Pakistan has been witnessing economic challenges owing to its incompetent policies in recent months with food inflation particularly in rural areas touching 25% last month residents in port city of karachi demanded immediate action to curb the rising inflation rather than short term measures inflation in pakistan particularly food inflation in rural areas just 25% last month something that is unprecedented in pakistan's economic history high debt high inflation low gdp growth and high taxes have exacerbated the poverty situation in pakistan the spiraling inflation has now become the biggest problem haunting the residents in pakistan's port city of karachi which has severely hit their domestic budgets Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan recently announced a relief package worth 15 billion rupees to curtail the rate of inflation but residents demanded long term policies with change in economic system in real terms instead of short term measures तो महंगाई हमारे पास बेसिकली किस वजह से बढ़ती है महंगाई जब आपका पेट्रोल महंगा हो जब आपके ट्रांसपोर्टेशन महंगी हो तो आपके पास महंगाई बढ़ती है अगर आप 15 अरब जो है रुपए यूटिलिटी स्टोर्स के ऊपर सब्सिडी देंगे और आप फ्यूल बढ़ाएंगे फ्यूल की कीमतें आसमान को छू रही होंगी तो उन यूटिलिटी स्टोर्स का क्या फायदा होगा पाकिस्तानी कंज्यूमर प्राइस इन्फ्लेशन रोज टू फोर्टीन पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स परसेंट इन जनवरी अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्टेटिस्टिक्स ब्यूरो कंज्यूमर प्राइस इंडेक्स इन्फ्लेशन हैज टू डेट ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री परसेंट इन डिसम्बर फूड आइटम्स सच एज पल्सिस चिकन एंड फ्रेश वेजिटेबल्स वेर अमॉन्ग द टॉप ड्राइवर्स ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन underscoring the squeeze on household budgets siyasat mana denge unhone kaha ki mehngai khatam kar denge magar wo kehte hain na wo karte kab hain wo sirf tabdili ka lollipop dete hain aur unko kuch bhi nahi aata khuda ke waaste ab jaye awam ko sukoon ka saans lene de january ke mahine mein 2% mehngai badhi hai 12 se 14% aa gayi hai dalon pe aate ke rate the 40 rupaye 70 aa gaye 90 rupaye aa gaye aap kya kar rahe hain yaar hum log ko gareeb ko gareeb karte reh rahe ho aur ameer ko ameer karte reh rahe ho Pakistan Central Bank in late January kept rates unchanged at 13.25% citing strong inflationary pressure. Afghanistan has confirmed its first case of the coronavirus in western Herat province declaring a state of emergency in the territory bordering Iran on Monday. Iran has reported a sharp rise in coronavirus cases and has confirmed 12 deaths in the latest. 
Afghanistan on Monday confirmed its first case of the coronavirus in its western Herat province, declaring emergency in the territory bordering Iran. Dozens of cases of the virus, also called COVID-19, which originated in China late last year, have also been confirmed in Iran, where 12 people have died, the highest death toll outside China. The confirmed patient of coronavirus is a 35-year-old man who had recently returned from the city of Qom, home to the majority of Iran's coronavirus cases, and has now been placed in quarantine. با اعلان شناسایی اولین واقعه مثبت کرونا در ولایت ایراد به اتکا بر معیارات و دستور عملای جهانی صحت و با در نظر داشت منافع و امنیت ملی کشور در مشورت با شورای محترم امنیت ملی تا اطلاع ثانی وضعیت استرار را در ولایت ایراد اعلان می نماییم Millions of Afghans live in Iran, often coming back and forth by car and bus across the border to see family and seeking work. With Afghan government's announcement on Monday, residents of Herat have urged the authorities to close the country's borders and spread awareness to prevent the virus. The coronavirus has infected nearly 77,000 people and killed more than 2,500 in China, mostly in Wuhan, capital of its Hubei province. Outside mainland China, the outbreak has spread to about 28 countries and territories with a death toll of around two dozen. Sponsored efforts by senior Afghan leaders to end election tensions in the country, former President Hamid Karzai and former Mujahideen leader Sayyaf met with National Unity Government leaders on Monday. The tensions erupted after incumbent President Ashraf Khani was declared winner of the presidential polls this month. His main rival, Abdullah Abdullah, has rejected the results, calling them a systematic fraud. Afghanistan's former President Hamid Karzai and former Mujahideen leader Abdul Rab Rasul Sayyaf met with National Unity Government leaders on Monday as tensions continue to rise between electoral campaign teams. The tensions erupted in the country after incumbent President Ashraf Ghani was declared winner of the September presidential polls and main rival Abdullah Abdullah rejected the results, calling them a systematic fraud. Meanwhile, NATO senior civilian representative for Afghanistan, Nicholas K, has called on all parties to prioritize national unity and the Afghan peace process over the election results. The final results of Afghanistan's presidential election were announced on February 18 by the Independent Election Commission. Ghani has now created a special commission for the ceremony of his swearing-in and Abdullah has also set up a separate commission for a separate oath ceremony to swear himself in as a president. People from the Buddhist community in India's northern Himachal Pradesh province on Tuesday offered a special prayers and took part in various traditional cultural activities as part of the celebrations of Losar, a New Year festival to the people of the Himalayan region and Tibetans throughout the world. Buddhist community in parts of India's northern Himachal Pradesh province is dipped into festivity of Losar, the Tibetan New Year. The Tibetans in exile in Dharamsala celebrated Losar on Tuesday by offering prayers and taking part in various traditional cultural activities at the main Buddhist temple in the hill town. Losar is celebrated as a gesture to thank the gods. Prayers on the occasion are performed to dispel the evils of the previous year and bring good luck for the coming year. Uh, with the great festive uh, mood, all in a lesser mood of celebrating for the well-being of every sentient being. So it's not just for you and me celebrating, it's well-being of the whole human being. Similar scenes were witnessed in the hill town of Shimla, where Buddhist monks at the Dorje Drak Monastery marks the occasion by performing special prayers on Monday. The festival mostly starts with the commemoration of eight symbols of Tibetan Buddhism like the parasol, conch shell, vase and victory banner. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.